gambling started uh, when you are a child, you know, where everybody, Chinese culture especially, you know, during New Year, where everybody gamble, you know, when children, as a child, you look at their parents, their relatives, gamble, you know, and then it just ingrained in your mind, you know, more or less, ingrained in your soul. So you, as you grow up, you catch up, catch up with this, you know, gambling habit with you. You won't, you won't just go away. You, you pick up, pick up the, you know, the trait of gambling, you know, more or less, right? Either, whether you are more into it or just uh, into it for fun. You know. And then as, as you grow older, you just, either you fully bloom, uh, whether, you, whether you get addicted to it or not. You know. Sometimes you, you just didn't realize it, you might get addicted to the gambling. You have a problem with gambling. You know. As life goes on, you know, you know, you just thought, ah, everybody thought gambling was no problem, no big deal. You know, everybody can withstand it. You know, they get control, self-control, you know. So you got confidence and, you know, you can hold or you can stop whenever you want it. You know. I think those people who just gamble for fun should just, just stop. They should just stop. Because uh, always what we think that it's fun we would keep doing it over and over again and it becomes a habit. Actually, I'm not uh, into gambling. My problem started when I have $100 left. I went to Genting. I lost 1000 over. Just once, once a while, I just went to work with friends. So it just so happened that with that $100, I won 30 over 1000 So I thought, such a miracle, man. This is wonderful, man. And then, uh, why don't I do it once a week? Hey, it happened again, 30,000 again. Why don't I do, try it twice a week? Hey, hey it's, it's working, man. The formula is working. Wow, it's wonderful. So, in the beginning of the month, I, uh, I amassed a lot of money. So I don't know where to spend, you know, spend lavishly, you know, treat friends here and that, you know. So, I know. You, you, your lifestyle started to change. You, you fool around, you think more, you know, and up your mind. Uh, you unsettle your mind. Uh. So you, you just uh, thought it's easy money. Why work hard? No, it's easy money. Every week you go, you win. Every week you go, you win. So, so you're getting no more motivation to work. Harder, you know. So, hey, this is such, such, such a good entertainment. You know? So we just thought it's a good entertainment. You know? Actually, we, gambling has started to you know, seep into our seep into our soul. It's trying to a stranglehold hold us that we don't never realize realize it. You know? It's holding us a bondage, and we keep on gamble. And then when we lost, we thought, ah, the good time still can happen again. So. You keep on gambling, and then you lost. You get loan for loan shark. No. You can settle it once. The family settle it for you once again, twice, three. You know. So the cycle keep on coming. You stop for a while, three months, six months, one year. No. You just never. It never can be cut off from the this kind of uh, stranglehold. No. You try to quit, but there's no will power to quit. How to quit? No. So the last straw is when I lost everything and my family couldn't afford to pay. So I just ran away. Ran away, hide out for two weeks. Then somehow the Christian brother told me that there is a <coughs> gambling rehab center. Do I, am I willing to go? I said, why not? And then there's another job in Pentung. So I said, whichever comes first. Uh. I said, God, if that is your will, well, whichever phone comes first, I will follow. And so happened. GRC, uh, GRC, uh, Gambling Rehab Centre, people come over. So I said, this might be a sign of God. What's my reason? I think greed. Greed, I... I love money. I love... I love to be... surrounded with... Um, being, being noticed by people, 
and how so is that I use money. I buy nice clothes, I drink and eat good food, good drinks, and people actually notice me. And from there, the money that parents are giving is not enough. So the easiest way and the fastest way to get money is through gambling. And my problem started actually uh, when uh, my relationship with my girlfriend. Uh, my girlfriend, uh, we were having some uh, problem basically is uh, uh, always uh, uh, about money. You know this, uh, when we are still schooling, we are actually still uh, just getting pocket money from our parents. So, uh, but when we go, uh, uh, go out for this uh, dating, uh, everything basically is uh, money. And so when money comes short, this misconception of uh, gambling can help to make money comes in and that's actually when we started. I mean, myself go for gambling. How, how I started gambling online was uh, I was actually surrounded by a lot of people that's gambling football all, all the while and I've never ever thought of it as it could make fast money until when I really need it. I started, my friends told me that you, you, you can make fast money in this in, the, in this game in gambling so they some online gambling they just opened an account for me and I started betting uh, put 100 ringgit and then I got 600 I put a thousand and then I get 6,000 so it it adds up I keep winning and until a day that I fall I fall hard I fell hard I lost five figures, 10,000, 20,000 before. And when I found out that football is not just the only way of gambling, because I'm starting to lose in football, so I started gambling somewhere else. I started gambling in, in illegal gambling dens that where they put the signboard as cyber cafes. School children, youngsters, they go in and play games. I, I happened to be there before playing games, and once I turned my back, uh, I realized that this place is not just a normal cyber cafe for surfing the internet or playing games, but you can actually gamble as well. So through there, uh, by playing roulette, by playing blackjack, then I realized that I can get more money from here than football. Stop, please stop. My wife, you no, know, mom, you no, know, children also. Be yeah, I said I will stop. Definitely I will stop. But the push can last how long? Half years, one year, top, one year and half. The most I go one half year and half. So the urge still there, still want to gamble. No money also is you get loan from the loan shop. So I end up keep on gambling again until the last thought is you cannot pay. Because of this greed, you are not scared in doing anything for money. That's how, that is how scary money can make somebody become if it's used in the wrong way. I have tried selling stolen cars. Okay, um, I have tried selling fake alcohols. Yeah. True friends, true friends, you have a lot of people out there that's having these sources. Especially, I'm sorry to say, it's colleges is, is a place where you can get all these things, not just education, but a lot of bad examples. So, choose your friends wisely. Try, try to, don't mix with a group of gamblers. Go drinking. <laughs> it's another replacement. It plays an addiction. Instead of gambling, you go with drinking. Huh. Then, then after drinking later on, your, your mom, then mind get numb. Then, the, the gam, your old friend, will, hey, come on, let's go, let's go, come on, have a quick one, let's go, gunting. Huh. Then, you know, 
you will go step in. Once you step in gambling, you will go keep on going. You won't stop. You won't be able to stop. You try to stop, but then you won't be able to stop. Once you started again, you won't be able to stop. Smart. I realized I was in trouble when, no, when I knew that nobody can actually bail me out in this anymore. Family members are not going to help me in this, and I'm like going to fall over the edge. I can't go anywhere, and whatever I do can't help me settle any debts. And if I don't make this to a stop. I would continue over and over again. I did thought of taking away my own life once, twice, because of how many times that I've done wrong. I want to change. I tell myself that, okay, I want to stop gambling today. Yeah, it stopped for one day, and the next day it comes back out again. You would gamble just because of some minor, minor, um, how do you say, it? minor stress some stress that has been given to us. So from then, and if you're, we, we feel that whatever we're doing right now, it's very hard because gambling doesn't need hard work. You can probably, I can sit in front of a computer and click a few buttons. <laughs> Within 15 minutes, I can get loads of money, but that's if you're lucky. I think. God has told me not to take my life away. I am saved by Him saying that He has granted me life once. He has given me life, taken me back from death once because I am actually an ex-cancer patient. I am actually an ex-cancer patient. So He has helped me came up from there, from death itself. And my parents, my aunts, uh, they helped me. And I realized that since I was young, I've been able to escape from this sickness of cancer. And right now, if I just take my life away, it's a waste of what He has given me, what God has given me to, to show. Because of this uh, problem, actually, I myself was forced to uh, run away and uh, my whole family also uh, shifted elsewhere. So, uh, currently, uh, I would say they, they, they couldn't look at me. So you need to run away if you don't have money to pay. So that they won't be able to find you. So they don't have a bargaining chip to, to bargain. And then your family member got a bargaining power. He ran away. No, they can say I disown him. We are severely tied to him, so the alone cannot do anything. My parents afford to pay. The problem is when the family member afford to pay, the, gam the gambler won't be able to stop gambling because he knew it instantly that someone will pay for him. And that's why the gam gambler cannot stop gambling. No, because there is, there is, there is no way uh, to stop him unless there is no, no more source. Maybe that's the last straw for him to quit, or else he cannot quit. No, or else he won't regret. He never realize it. All, all the while, all the while, the kid is you no, know, no, urge to gamble. Parents should uh, show more love and concern for uh, for them instead uh, of uh, every time. Uh, after settling off their debts, uh, you know, they uh, start uh, scolding you and keep on pressuring you, asking you when are you going to uh, uh, return this uh, uh, money. And, uh, well, I do understand that uh, when, when we got into this, uh, we actually breached the trust between our parents and the, the son. But, uh, Further, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, further scolding and distrust will just uh, discourage them and make them uh, go uh, even deeper into the problem. I want to say sorry to my parents, sorry to my aunt, my uncles, that 
you you all have been putting a lot of hope. You all are thinking that I can do big things out there, and right now I'm disappointing all of you. And to my friends, my good, real good friends that actually helped me out, not by borrowing me money, but by stopping me, by scolding me. Some of them, some of my friends actually borrowed me money and after that they stopped. They said, no, you're not, I'm not going to borrow you any money. Face your problems right now or else you're, you're getting deeper and deeper. I want to thank my friends for saying that. That time, I, I can't think. I'm thinking that you guys are pushing me to the edge. You guys are not helping me out, but you guys are actually doing me a favor and I thank you guys for that right now. I really thank you all. And for my family members, I, I don't blame, I can't blame you all for pushing me. I've learned a lot in, in gambling rehabilitation center right now. And I thank you all for that. And I'm really sorry for what I've done. And that's it. In one of our recent research findings, we found that individuals high in gratitude tend to be less materialistic and tend to have lower problem gambling scores. And people with higher hope in life tend to have lower problem gambling scores as well. So they actually feel a sense of belonging, they feel a sense of a hope in which they can actually look forward to. So they tend to have lower problem gambling scores. However, individuals high in personal growth initiative in their propensity actually have higher problem gambling scores. Although personal growth initiative is a character strength and it should be a positive character strength, however, they actually tend to induce higher problem gambling scores. So we suggest that individuals who actually want to grow as a person actually channel that growth propensity towards a more positive outlet. Okay, you can use the Problem Gambling Severity Index to actually identify whether you are a potential problem gambler. Have you bet more than you could really afford to lose? Still thinking about the last 12 months, have you needed to gamble with larger amounts of money to get the same feeling of excitement? When you gambled, did you go back another day to try to win back the money you lost? Have you borrowed money or sold anything to get money to gamble? Have you felt that you might have a problem with gambling? Has gambling caused you any health problems, including stress or anxiety? Have people criticised your betting or told you that you had a gambling problem, regardless of whether or not you thought it was true? Has your gambling caused any financial problems for you or your household? Have you felt guilty about the way you gamble or what happens when you gamble? Based on these nine items, you can rate yourself according to a Likert scale ranging from 0 to 3, 0 indicating never, 1 indicating sometimes, 2 indicating often, 3 indicating almost always. Items are totaled up and the total of 0 identifies a non-gambler, 1 to 2 identifies a low-risk gambler, 3 to 7 identifies a moderate risk gambler and a score of 8 or more identifies a problem gambler. In that case, please seek professional help.